<laughs> Hello, my friends. This is Bobby D coming to you live from the Long Pond, Super Philippines. Have an awesome night today. day. Hope you are as well. We'll be from topic for today. Five signs she might just be cheating on you. Five signs she might just be in the yeah. Five signs, man. Yep. Yeah. A lot of times when a foreigner has a, a Filipina girlfriend and she he's over there and she's over there you know east and west whatever there comes a lot of doubt in your mind sometimes you know and even if you trust her there are times when you doubt has a tendency to do what erode away your trust i know i know you can trust trust her for the utmost you know and then sometimes some things some place wherever you are in your circumstances in life and your situation in life Doubt has a tendency to do what? Creep up in your memories of your mind, you know, in the corners of your mind. So we're going to talk about some five signs, like five basic signs that you should look at when you're dealing with your Filipina and as it pertains to cheating or as it pertains to trusting her not to cheat. You with me, G? Let's go. All right, let's go. Thumbnail for the day real quick, real quick. Here's a thumbnail for the day, ladies and gentlemen. What's she doing? What's she doing? You know, if I want to know what she's doing up in there, you know, you send her five hundred dollar a month, two hundred dollar a month, three hundred dollar a month, hundred. What's she doing? You know, I'm gonna tell you. There's signs that can tell you what she might just be doing behind your back. She might just be doing something that you don't want her to do. She might just be saying, you know, things that happen, man. And if you don't watch out for the signs, the signs will watch out for you. Okay, let's go. Focus for the day. No hocus pocus. Just focus. We're gonna talk about she deceives you. Number two, number two, we're gonna talk about she conceits on you. Number three, we're gonna talk about she's indiscreet on you. Number four, we're gonna talk about she mistreats you. Number five, she excretes on you. Ooh, that's a tough one. Excrete. What's your name? I'm gonna tell you later. Chill. Watch me. All right. So what's number one? Here we go. Five signs that she might be cheating on you. Number one, she deceits on you, on you, or she is what? Deceitful. Okay. And so it's important to understand what deceitful is about. Deceitful means that you're dishonest, you know, you're untruthful. That you're not behaving in a manner that would uh, improve your relationship. That you're saying one thing and doing another. That's dishonesty. That's untruthful. And what happens along, along with that is that sometimes people may not be dishonest. They may not be deceitful. But they do what? Intentionally what? Mislead you. Okay? You may think A is A. And they, they know A is not A. But they're not going to tell you A is A. <laughs> a is not A. You know what I'm saying? They mislead you. That is That runs along with being what? The deceitful. Huh? And, and then there's hiding the truth. They know the truth. They know exactly what was said, what was done, but they put it on the pillow, you know, or they put it behind the door. They hide it. All of that's being deceitful. So is your lady doing that to you, man? And you up in here, and you up in here trying to figure out what she going that, That's deceit. That's a sign, man. That's a sign. And, and, and it indicates betrayal of your trust. You know, it's very damaging to a relationship. Whenever someone said I was doing something and you're not aware of it, and they're either misleading you intentionally, they're dishonest about it, or deceiving you and hiding the truth. That can hurt your relationship. It's hard to deal with people that, you know, do one thing and say another. You know, hard, man. You got to be consistent with your with your attitude and everything you do, and that will help you build up your relationship. So if you're a lady, whatever, your partner's saying, uh, well, you know, John, I've been home every day, and I've just been waiting on your call, and, and you called her 15 times. She never did. <laughs> she was nowhere to be found. That's a problem, oh brother. My sisters and brother, that is a problem. And that's a sign, ladies and gentlemen, that she maybe could it be, would it be, should it be, maybe, just might be cheating on you. You know what I'm saying? You know, really. And when you cheat on someone, it doesn't mean necessarily mean another person, another man. It could be another woman. Yeah, you heard me right. She could be having another woman. You know, this is an open society now. Men go with men. Women go with women. You know, I know many of us know that biblically that's incorrect. You know, but when you, when you put the Bible to the side, you deal with the world, right? And anything goes in this world we live in today. Men can go with men. Women can go with women. Men can marry men. Women can marry women. You know, uh, and next thing you know, a woman might be able to marry a dog. <laughs> Man, I don't know things that go crazy in this world, you know. So yeah, it could be somebody, it could be another male, it could be a female, anyway, but it could be someone. You know? That's a possibility. What's number two? Don't know what to do. What to do? Number two. We're gonna run this real quick. Look, look, number two. Uh, she conceits on, or she's conceitful. Okay. 
What do you mean conceive for body? I don't know what you mean conceive. She's excessively uh, proud of herself, man. She's overly uh, self-centered. Hmm? Everything is about her. My way, my house, my dog, my cat, my money, my and my looks, my beauty, my clothes. I have to have the best, finest. New. She, she always got to look better. When you're dealing with a woman like that, it's hard, man, because they will keep you broke, busted, and disgusted. And not only that, because you don't finance them like they want to, they're going to find somebody else. You know? So that's a sign, man. She could, might just be deceitful and cheating on you. you, know? you know? it's, a, uh, it's overly self-centered, egotistical. It's about my world. Everything is about my world. You know what I'm saying? You in my world, but this is my world. It creates an imbalance of power in the relationship. You know? You think you're on this level, and she's up here, and she thinks because you're down there, you're nothing. You know? And she's everything. Egotistical will destroy uh, a relationship. Being egotistical, being having huge big head, having you know, you're, you're the king and she's nothing, that that will destroy the relationship. You have to balance that thing. I'll be creating an imbalance of power. And when you have an imbalance in the relationship, it slides down. Okay. And then the, the relationship becomes unhealthy. Unhealthy, man. Anything unhealthy will do what? Decay. It will go down. It will struggle. It will it will it will not stand firm. It will fluctuate. You know, every every relationship in life goes up. You have some ups and you have some downs. The important thing is doing the ups and downs that you stand firm on your belief in your relationship. Stand firm and you will, it will carry you through the ups and downs, the ebb and flows of your relationship. If you are both could believe that this relationship is going to work and that you, you know what the final end is going to be, you know that this is this is time is going to pass. And you got to stand firm and be strong. No matter what she says, no matter what he says, your relationship is on a firm ground and you know that you're going to get through this. That's, you know, it's how important that you understand the power of relationship, man. You know, the Bible talks about the power of two. You know, you know, you know that scripture says, where there are two or more gathered together in my name, there I am, which is the Lord, you know, in the midst of them. You remember that scripture? This is where there's two or more gathered in my name, there I am in the what? Midst of them. That is the power of two, baby. Yeah. And when you got the Lord on your side, you can't lose with the stuff we use. <laughs> there you go. Uh, but yeah, uh, it's important that you understand uh, when you're having a person that's conceitful, all she think about her clothes, her dresses, how she look, her makeup, and she got to have the finest this, the finest that. That You know what? I mean, she's not satisfied with you. you know? she, she's not satisfied. She wanted to look best, not just for you. For somebody else, you know, and that means could it be, would it be, should it be that she might just be what cheating on you? Gotta look out for that. Number three, just a water bay. Let's go, man. I ain't playing with y'all. Let's go. Number three, she's indiscreet. Okay, what you mean indiscreet, Bobby? What you mean? Yeah, she 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 don't care what she say, how she say, who she say it to. She just gonna talk your trash, talk your stuff to everybody in the world. Everybody know your business. <laughs> They know everything. They know what time you go to bed. They know the time you wake up. They know what you eat, what you don't like. They know they, when you when you did when you when you cough one time. <laughs> they tell everything on you, man. It's hard, man. When you deal with somebody that want to talk your business, it's hard because you like, man. You ain't got to tell them all that. They ain't got to know all that. Why they got to know all that? And it's hard. And when you when you see a woman though that does that, or even a man that does that, tell everything in relationship. That means that they're indiscreet. Indiscreet means they don't care what they say, how they say it. Yeah, you're going to say everything. And it's hard when you're dealing with somebody like that because there's such a thing as privacy in a relationship. Everyone in a relationship have a certain medium, certain modicum of privacy. And that, what, that's, what does that mean? That means that you're dealing with someone that's not going to uh, disclose your private relationship, the, the details of your private relationship. You know, what's between a man and a woman? The Bible says uh, the bed is, the marriage bed is what? Undefiled. What does that mean? That means that what is between a man and a woman is between that man and a woman. You don't go around telling everybody your business about your relationship because you pretty soon you're going to have a relationship. You know what I mean? That means you don't care. You don't care what you say, how you do it. How you, you don't care. You say anything. And that kind of person is very, very dangerous for your relationship, man. They act carelessly. You know, they, they erode, it erodes your trust, you know. You, you don't, you said, man, you, you have to go tell them that. Why you tell them that? I don't want them to know my business. Oh, well, you know, they had, come on, man. You got to have some care. Be careful about what you say about your relationship. Because when you don't, are not careful, that has a tendency to erode that person's trust. And they can't trust you to keep personal secrets or personal information that stays in general only go stay in the relationship. 
Believe you me, it is important when you have somebody that respects that and then you know you can deal with each other. When you have somebody that don't respect your boundaries or your personal and your private life in your relationship, that can be very, very damaging for the success and survival of your relationship. And as I mentioned before, she might just be or he might just be what? She know you gotta watch out for that kind of stuff. When people don't care what they say, how they say, it causes tension in the relationship. Y'all tense up because you don't know what she gonna tell you. But she gonna tell next. You don't. He don't know. She don't know what she. He gonna tell on some her next. They don't know, and that causes tension. That can destroy your relationship. Okay, you gotta have, the, have a sense of discreetness about you. You know, I remember when I was growing up, man. My mama used to tell me she's a son. I said, yeah, man. She said when you get married, son, when you get in a relationship. Keep people out your business. I said, what you mean, mom? She said, you heard me, son. Keep people out your business. Nobody need to know what you and your lady do, your wife do. Nobody need to know that. Don't come, come telling me nothing because I'm going to send you right out here. I'm not the one you should be telling your business to. When you tell your business to everybody in the world, that's what's going to happen. Everything in the world going to happen to you in your relationship. Keep your business to yourself when you're married. You know, all that stuff my mama told me, man. And I don't want to tell nobody. You know, you can't do that. Because it hurts your relationship in the long term. It, it causes the road of trust. It causes tension to build up. And when tension builds up in a relationship, each any party, there's a tendency to what? Explode. You you want to, you, you know, it could be violent sometimes, you know, but hopefully not. But you, know, you want to reduce the amount of tension by being discreet versus what? Indiscreet. Okay, number four, getting ready to go out this door. I ain't playing with y'all. Hey, number four, mistreat you, man. She mistreating you. What you mean by what you mean? She's unfair to you, unkind to you, talking any kind of way to you, talking smart, talking nasty. That's mistreatment. Nobody deserves that in a relationship. You're supposed to love each other, right? People that love each other don't speak to each other unkindly. People that love each other don't don't you know do things that would be mistreating the other party. They have to work together, even though they're having issues. They have to work together on a certain level of respect and decency. That's what maintains the success of a relationship. And whether you're going through troubles, whether you're going through a good time or bad time, because relationship, I just told you a minute ago, relationships do what? They go up and down. They're rocky sometimes. You know? But whether you're going through the rocky times, the nasty times, the funky times, the good times or either, whatever, that relationship re remains in pop. In, in pop risk treatment is not necessary in a relationship. You got to be fair, you know? Fairness is always, and respect is always important in relationship. When you have no fairness, when you have no respect in relationship, that relationship is going to do what? Crumble. Going to fall down to the ground. Behaving in a hurtful manner, mean, hit, and hate, a mean and hurtful way does not help. And if she's doing it, too, could it be, would it be, should it be? She's just maybe cheating on you. You know, people do that. When you're not, when you're not happy with someone or some, your relationship, you have a tendency to do what? Look to the left, look to the right, look up, look down, you know, look behind you because you want to see some other thing, you know, you want something, somebody else to, to do a fancy your interest, you know what I'm saying, entertain you. So that's what happens, man. You know, so if you're lady doing any of these things I'm telling you, it's a possibility. I'm not saying it is, but it, could it be, would it be that it may happen? Get now, how do you deal with these? One more, one more, one more, one more. Number five, she does what? She might just uh be excreting on you what you mean by being excreting excreting on you man <laughs> that's a nasty one there y'all i said excrete y'all know what that means go look it up and google it <laughs> excrete when she you know you know the word uh i'm gonna spell it for you uh i t t y and put s h in front of it when she's itty on you <laughs> that's excreting man you know and how what's what's a woman do or what's a what's a guy or woman do when they want to do excretement on you no huh? the antagonistics Always want to cause an argument. Always want to fuss for no reason. Always want to say to call you all out your name. All kinds of to call you the N word. All kind of stuff. You know that's not necessary. That's that's causing issues that don't have to be caused. If you are having a person in your life that does that to you, she's uh, excreting on you. Uh, she's belligerent. She's sour. She's abrasive. Talking to you all kind of way. That is wrong. And, and, and that relationship won't last like that. You have to improve your way you speak to each other. You have to improve the way you talk to each other, and your relationship will grow up and get in time. Now, there are times when you can't talk to each other in, in a nice manner, then you should keep your mouth shut. Until you get to a point in your life where you can 
open up and talk freely and cordially and polite, kind, then you do that. But when you have that belligerent attitude, mm -hmm. that does not foster anything about salvaging your relationship in your house. That's you gotta say. So it could be that she might be cheating on you. And ladies, it could be that he might be what cheating you as well. All right, that's all I got for you today, man. I'm telling you, man, I bring it to you right tight, long, strong, and I don't play. Let's go. So I'm gonna run this read for to you. Summary. Number one, she deceits on you. Number two, she conceits on you. Number three, she didn't screen on you. Number four, she mistreats you. Or number five, she excreed on you. Those are some things that you want to look out for. Now, people get ready. What is the train is coming? Don't need no ticket. Ah, uh, you just get on board. All you need is love. Woo! Say it again. Say sweet, sweet love. Don't need, don't need no ticket. Ah, uh, you just get on board. Get on board. We're going to find out who's rubbing off, talking up, popped up, and be the first man in the his house. Who that said they're going to beat them? Say, I need to know. When I say to, to, you say all aboard. To, 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 to. When I say all aboard, you say to, to. All aboard. All aboard. Let's ride the train. Ride the train. Try to find out who the first man up in this camp today. I need to know. Inquire my want to know. Who that say they're going to beat them? Say, can you tell me, please? I'm going to look down there and find out who that is. Who that say they're going to beat them? Say, let's go. I ain't playing. I ain't playing. Let's go. First man up in the house today. Ah, Murphy, hey, what's up, brother? So good to see you in the house. Say, two, two. Murphy, Murphy, Goldfinger. What's up, Goldfinger? He said, two, 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 two. Right back to my brother from another Martha. So good to see you in the house today. He's riding the train, number one man in the house. That says that he wants to be here first. He wanted to talk, check out this topic. He wanted to see what he could do. He wanted to understand what I'm talking about. So you got you. I hope I hope I brought it up to you right, Ty Long Strong, that you know what you need to be looking out for. You know, when whenever somebody's cheating on you, there's going to be symbols. There's going to be signs. There's going to be roadmaps. There's going to be indicators. And if you read, you can read and read the handwriting on the wall and stop looking all up in her grill. <laughs> you will find out that things change. If people change, things change. And, and when people change, they look for other things to entertain them. And, and that happens, yeah. You know what I'm saying? That. Number two. Uh, so thank you so much, Murphy. Give me a prop. Ryan Train by release. He wanted number two. Just won't do. <laughs> What's up, smooth? So good to see you, right? Shay, body leaves you one day. Another room, love. He said, Number two, am I? Yes, you are number two, and you will. Number two won't do, brother, but you'll do just fine. I had cheese, uh, smooth sounds say he's coming to the Philippines. Uh, maybe this month we will be waiting on you with open arms, my brother, to see how you get here and how you do. I don't care how you get here, but get here if you can. <laughs> Get him, man. Let's go. Ryan Train Body. Who we got? Smooth. He said, Congratulations, my dear. You all right, man. So good to see you. Ryan Train Body. You see one nation group. More love. Who we got? Good to see. Uh, Train. Uh, Murphy, hey, what's up? He said, Smooth. What's up, man? Be safe in your upcoming trip. Yeah, man. It's very important that you be careful. Uh, there's a lot of things get to happen on a trip that, that with that amount of time, you're talking about 16, 18 hours, maybe more, depending on, you know, your, your stops and your, oh, well, your where you stop layovers. Uh, it can be very, very troublesome, so, but you got to keep your mind focused. You got to keep, keep your body right. If you got medication, bring your medication because just because you're away from home, you still got to take your medication and you do have to have access to your medication. So whatever you go, bring your medication. If you have, if you have medication that going to run out while you're here, bring abundance, okay? Bring abundance of it so that, because you may not be able to get a prescription filled here because you're coming from a different what? Country, okay? But bring enough adequate medication. If you, for those of you that have to bring that medication, bring it, okay? You're going to need it. And and nobody's going to have pierce, mercy, mercy on you because you forgot your medication. <laughs> Let's go, Ryan Trey, by the DC One Nation. Russ Carter, he's how this relevant to business network. Russ, this is not relevant to business network, Russ. Who told you that, Russ? This is not. Russ, if you don't like the topic, why'd you tune in? Okay, Russ? Uh, this is not relevant to business networking because I'm I'm going through uh I'm going through LinkedIn today, y'all. So that's why he kind of gave me attitude. It's not. If you don't want to look at it, LinkedIn allows me to put anything I want on this on their channel. If you got a problem with it, Russ, contact LinkedIn, okay? And, and ask them why they let this on, okay? Because I do what they let me to do. Okay, Russ. Happy New Year to you too, Russ. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Russ. <laughs> All right. I don't know he came up with that, man. LinkedIn people can be sort of um, 
a hole sometimes. You know what I'm saying? But you know, uh, that's how people are. People always want to put a, a wrench and stuff. And he know if he saw the topic, he had the opportunity not to not to opt in, right? He chose to opt in so he could be a troll. And so when trolls come on the show, you know what we do? We get rid of them. So Murphy Hayes, go ahead and do your thing on him, okay? Do that for me. You you uh you are uh, uh, a blue wrench. Branch him out. Okay, man. I appreciate that. All right, let's go. Murphy Hayes said, uh, they neglect to disclose the facts. Yeah, that's that's what happens, man. And you know what they'll say? Well, you didn't ask me. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> you sleep with a man every night, and I'm supposed to ask you that? It, well, you didn't ask me what I think when they about somebody every night. You didn't ask me that, did you? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I mean, it's crazy, man. People, that's what people do. They don't disclose the facts, or they hide the facts, or they mislead you. All of those are cousins and relatives of uh, 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 trying to deceive somebody, trying to to hide and to manipulate the truth. Okay, so that's what I am talking about: misleading others in relation. Give me one second, guy. Give me one second. I need to do something here real quick. I need to do something real quick, real quick, real quick. Uh, give me one second. Get this guy out of here. Okay. All right, let's go. But yeah, they they they, they mislead you all the time, man. And it's not right. Okay. It's, it doesn't maintain uh, a a very, very good stable relationship. It causes tension, it causes anger, it causes doubt, and, and a whole bunch of other frustrations that happen in your relationship. Uh that's because if you're in a long distance relationship, which is an LDR, most, most foreigners and Filipinos are, that frustrates you to no end. You're trying to figure out, you have a set time that you talk to each other every night on a video chat line. Every night, and she's not there one night, she's not there two nights, she's not there three nights. Like, what's going on? What, what have I done something wrong? You begin to self doubt yourself, feel doubts. What have I done? What did I say? And you, because if you build up a relationship with that woman, you have. It caused you to doubt yourself. Why did I did I say something wrong? Where's she at? And you know, you you worried about her, and more importantly, you were worried about the status of your relationship. Did she leave me? What what's going on? And then you start calling around, texting around a family and a friend, and emailing. And have you seen it? You know, crazy man. What the best thing to do? Keep your relationship stable is to con talk to talk to your your person or your your mate, your partner consistently and honestly on a regular basis and be open and honest. Keep the lines of communication open. It's okay if somebody doesn't like you anymore. It really is. It, it, you know, that's not gonna, that's gonna, not gonna uh, uh, cause you to be a bad person because they don't like you. No, you just accept it and move on. Nobody's guaranteed to like everybody for life. People change and they have a right to say I change. But when they don't tell you that and they deceive you and mislead you, that's where the problem lies, okay? Okay, let's go. All uh, right, train by release, he's one nation. Smooth, he said, yeah, I'm going my trip to late next month. Okay, okay, okay. He says, smooth sounds are saying that he postponed his trip. He said, I have no one to take care of my dog. I need to make sure I have enough money. Okay, that's, <laughs> those are obviously two important things. <laughs> How you gonna leave the country and you got a dog and, okay, and then you don't have enough money? You can't even go nowhere, buddy. Uh, you probably, I thought you had already bought your ticket. <laughs> the way y'all, the way you were talking, I said, well, man, you know, booked the flight and everything. You ain't even booked the flight yet. Man, look, don't tell nobody you're doing stuff until you get ready to do it, okay? Or or until you're doing it, in the process of doing it. That's the way you keep devils out your life, okay? Because somebody here, you say, I'm I'm going to the Philippines and on to on next morning, y'all, I'm going there. And you know what they'll do? They'll get everything you can do to, to stop you from reaching your goals and reaching your dreams in your life. Yeah, that's how some people are. People are just, there's some devilish people in this world. Yeah? And so you, it's important that you, if you're gonna go next month, don't go hotel, don't go telling the world about that. To keep that to yourself. When you're about to go the day before, a week before, whatever, two days, and you got your trip, let's go, excuse me one minute, please. Very important, hello, hello. Uh, no, thank you. Not interested. I am not interested. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Wow, man. They got the same robocalls 
They got the United States selling stuff. They're doing it early in the morning here. Who does that? Philippines does that. Only in the Philippines. <laughs> but yeah, that was a sales call from Sky K. We want me to get some new feature. But um, it's so very, very important. This spoof. Whenever you're going out of the country, whatever, whatever goal you have, whatever you're going to do, do it. But be this, be discreet. And I don't mean be indiscreet. Go and tell everybody, hey, I'm going to Philippines. Hey, I'm going to Philippines. That's being indiscreet. That's like somebody in your relationship, your girlfriend, whatever, your wife, whatever. She telling everything you do. You know what we did last night? <laughs> Johnny did. He did this in the bedroom. They, What's the no? That's between you and her. That's the same way with you. Don't go around. Hey, I'm going to. Hey, hey. Don't do that, man. Keep it to yourself. Okay. Once you got your plans finalized, you paid your money, you got your arrangement for your dollars, whatever, you know, then you know you got your ticket in your hand and you get ready to go. You pack in your bag. Then you say, hey, man, I'm going to be there next week. Okay. That's how you do. I'm just telling you right. Don't get mad at me now. But y'all know I'm telling. Don't y'all know I'm telling them right. Y'all know I'm telling them right. But that's how you do it. Let's go right train by the DC one nation. Up. Who we got? Murphy. He said people are crazy to think that they can get away with cheating on social media. They do it, man. I know. Uh, you know what they do? Uh, a lot of times what they'll do is they'll have like more than one uh, social media ID on, and several different social media applications. And uh, you won't, you know, they'll have a different name, maybe a different picture. And, and so there you sometimes you can't tell it, you know, but uh, what happens is all too more often than not, it catches up with them because eventually they have to show the real face. You know, if they, if they really try to want to cheat and meet up with that person and eventually that comes out to some delight. There's so many ways you can find out if somebody's cheating you, cheating on you online, because there's going to be not only is there a physical relationship that links them up together, the cheaters. There's a what metaphysical or social media relationship online because they'll have a Facebook gap and they talk to each other and so forth and so forth. And so you, eventually you will get the message that these two are doing something incorrectly. Okay, man. And you find out, you know, and then a lot, a lot of times you really, really concerned, you can hire private eye, right? If you got the more that because it's expensive, man. Private eye is gonna cost you at least five hundred or more. Just to monitor them for like 24 hours or and to see what they do. Yeah. So uh, if you got the time under the burn, burn it. But, <laughs> but the best thing you can do be your own private eye. You know? Always trust your woman or your mate male ladies always trust your man, but be be aware that even though you trust them, people are people and have a tendency to do what stray. Okay. And they have the tendency to be tempted. Sometimes people are men, some men are not strong enough to stand temptation. Some women are, not, are weak and they can't stand it either. So people are people. And so if you're dealing with someone, weak, especially weak, uh, morally, uh, emotionally weak, emotionally fragile, morally fragile, those are the types of people that are open to that type of uh, treatment of, of cheating. Okay. That's the, and especially sexually, some people that can't never get enough. You know? So uh, when you, if you hooked up with somebody like that, you better keep your eyes and ears and everything else open because uh, that happens a lot. OK, so the best thing is to choose the right partner for you. If you're the type that you don't play around, you want somebody solid, you want somebody consistent with you, you want somebody honest and truthful with you, not deceiving and not conceitful, then that's the way you that's who you look out for. And how do you find that type of person? It takes T-I-M-E, time, OK, time. You have to look for them and you have to pray about them and then you have to deal with them on a day in, day out basis so that you begin to know what their character, their their features, their morality. All of those things are important to the strength and to the strength, to the strength and the and, and strengthen your bond and, and your relationship. Okay. And so that means that they have no propensity or very little propensity. Any anybody can be make a mistake, yeah, but they have little propensity to do what want to cheat on you. They're right. You know, I've never been a cheater, man. I've never been a cheater in my life. I have, I've had the desire to do so. You know, I wanted to, but my morality wouldn't let me do it. I'm just, I'm just that kind of guy. <laughs> but yeah, I, you know, I would never that that would never, uh, I would never act on that. You know, things everybody thinks things in their minds, but it's the, when you cross that line of action on negative thoughts, that's what causes you to mess up in this world. You know, if you don't believe me, uh, look at the guy, that, the Idaho killer. You know, the guy was a, uh, uh, he's a student and getting his doctoral degree in one of the major colleges out there. And his, his study was in criminology. So he had criminal stuff in his mind all 24 seven. So he went, messed around and acted out on the ideas in his what? Mind. When you act out on negative ideas, anything can happen. 
Look what happened to those people that he, and, and the reason why I say he did it, they found his what? DNA on a knife, on a sheath of a knife. Okay, so uh, uh, be careful what you think, ladies and gentlemen, and, and then be careful how you act upon what you think. If it's a negative thought, you want to get rid of it. Yeah, you want to get rid of it immediately. Don't let thoughts consume you because when they consume you, they will use you and cause you to do dangerous stuff. Okay, let's go, Rob Train, Bobby Lee, One Nation, a group of love. Who we got Murphy. Yeah, I'm sorry. Hold on. Did I miss one? Okay, yeah. Uh, smooth sound. He said, uh, my original plan to come here, come there was in February. She asked me to come this month because of birthday. But I did the math and would spend 200 and 400 for all the that she wants. Okay. Okay, so basically, ladies and gentlemen, he's saying that his girlfriend wanted him to come earlier than February. And she wanted to, to that's understandable. She wanted you to uh, help celebrate her birthday. As you may or may not be aware of, ladies and gentlemen, Birthdays are huge here in the Philippines. And so uh, when, when the Philippine wants you to celebrate, that means she wants you to bring money. <laughs> Come in with some money in your pocket, buy food for all her friends. Because birthdays here, the person that's the birth that has the birthday, they're responsible for entertain, entertaining their friends usually. They'll take them out to dinner, buy food for them, buy drinks for them. And it's, it's like the opposite in the U.S. In the U.S., if the person has a birthday, you're going to buy stuff, buy them a gift. You know, get you take them out. But here's a little bit different. So that's what she wanted you to. She don't, apparently, she doesn't have the money, but she thought you'd be Mr. Money Pockets and come out here and be a big ball of shot call and have a great day with her on her birthday. <laughs> but move, you, you're very smart, man. You told her, she told, tell her, just look, I'm not the one. I'm going to come out there when I get ready. And that's it. So you you uh, caved into her demands to some degree because you were planning to get there in, in January. Don't do that, man. Stick to your guns and be honest and true to yourself. Don't let anybody manipulate you to live their life and to live their truth. You be true to you, okay? That's what real people do. We're true to our own self and not everybody else. You with me, man? Let's go. Ryan Chain, Bobby Lee, see one nation, group of love. Murphy, hey, he said, uh, when they talk about, when they talk out uncontrollably about personal things, you have no respect and probably already have someone. Yeah, that's a, that's a red flag. Uncontrollably about personal things, that means that they're not discreet, they're not respectful of the person they're talking about or the situation. And if that person is not respectful about a situation in their past or in their life, they're not going to be respectful for you and your relationship. She probably already told everything she knows. <laughs> Most people in her circle or inner circle probably know more about you than anybody else in the Philippines they, they, that you know about yourself. <laughs> You know, it's because they don't people, you know, I don't want I don't want all my business to be told in the street. I just I'm just not the kind of guy. Some people may like that, you know. I'm not that kind of guy that want to tell you everything from A to Z about me unless I get to know you and we've got on that level. But if you go broadcast my information, that means that I'm not that appealing to you and you could probably just be cheating on me. You know what I'm saying? That's what people do when they're indiscreet. They have no concern about what they say about you, how they look, how you, how they talk about you. And when a person has no concern about what they say about you, how they talk about you, that means that there's an issue about how they respect you. They have no respect for you. That's a matter of respect. And when you lose respect, you lose trust. They both go hand in hand in any relation. No respect, no trust. No trust, no respect. Okay? And that relationship begins to be what? Toxic. Any toxic relation will never last long. I mean, sex might be good if that's what you're into, but that's it. You know, after the sex is over, the toxicity comes. I understand, gentlemen. Right now, foundation will run up. Who we got? Smooth. He said, Oh, yes, Mr. Bobby. Last time I was in your chat, a follow of yours went and told BA, okay, or Jay, I was speaking ill. Ill will about him. That's a lie. I was just wondering about him. Okay. You didn't speak ill will about him. I agree with that. I remember that uh broadcast. You just asked the question, where was he doing? So whoever that who whoever that follower was, don't go around telling lies on people. Be honest. He asked a sincere. I remember that broadcast distinctly. He said, wonder what BA is doing. Okay, for those of you who don't know BAs, and I don't talk general. Let's let's get let's just get this straight right now. As a general rule on this show, I try not to talk about other bloggers, okay, or YouTubers or bloggers, whatever you want to call them. I try not to. 
because it begins if they hear this they begin to tit to tat tit for tat tit for tat then they're going to show and talk about me i don't i'm not into that i'm not into that and i don't i don't never be into that that's not my thing i don't like he said she said stuff and i don't i'm not i don't flow like that and so i would suggest that everybody on the show get that understanding do not bring uh other vloggers unless i say their name or something don't bring that up in here because that's what's what's going to happen same thing that just happened just just you just told me about a, 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 a subscriber from this channel went to this guy's show and said you were talking bad about him on my show that is wrong it, it's not true you did speak his name you didn't mention him because i didn't know what ba was meaning but i know now and so uh you did but it was not negative you asked what was going on you have any do anybody know what's going on with him now that's all it's a simple inquiry and so if somebody went back and told him you were talking bad about him that's wrong and now now that's the mere fit the mere mention of that fact is going to have a bad reflection on this show because that person went and told another blogger that somebody on my show talked about it, and that's going to have a reflection not only on you my guy but me as well so i'm telling everybody on my show please do not mention any names unless i mention a name or something very very important happens to that person or significant rather happens to that person that we all need to be aware of. Like if somebody dies, if Bilago dies, uh, he moved to a different country, or you know, stuff like scandalous stuff, you know, stuff that everybody needs to be aware of. But so try not to do that. And I try not to as well, because uh when you talk about people, you want to make sure that they are able to be able to respond if you're talking negatively. We but in this case, it was not negatively. It was perfectly, perfectly an innocent question, innocent query. Hey, how's how's BA doing? That's it. I remember that show. It's like what a couple of couple of shows ago, whatever. Anyway, but I remember that man. So whoever told that lie needs to stop the lie. Okay. If you told if you know who you are out there, I'm not gonna mention his name. If you know who you are and you told that lie on smooth sound, a smooth sound that he was talking bad, stop the lie. I can go back and play the show. He it was nothing bad he said. Okay, so don't don't go around here lying on people. Okay, we don't need that on the show. We don't need that in in our lives. And you should stop telling lies on people. Okay, being deceitful, being dishonest. That's not right. Be real, like steel. Okay, and that's okay. It's, it would be it would have been fine if you'd have mentioned it to that other guy. Show that okay. Uh, this person asked about you. That's fine. That's all he did. That's that's it. That's all he did. He asked about him. What's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with that's perfectly innocent and cordial and polite, to be honest with you. Okay, so don't don't tell lies. Please don't do that, sir. Please don't do that, ma'am. If whoever said that lie about smooth and about this show, we talking about stop it right there, mister. But we try not to get in all that tip for tat stuff. I, I used to be a member of Jay's show. I'm no longer a member. We used to be, you know, you know, pretty but I, I I'm the one that's mentored him before he even got a show, before he kept you he kept before he got on YouTube. And uh, we, you know, came to a point. Sometimes you come to a point in your career, in your relationship where you have to, you know, make changes. So I decided to make changes. And so that's it. You know, so it's nothing. I'm not negative coming down on him or anybody else. And neither was smooth. So let's be real. Let's go, Ryan Chain. Who we got? Terry Flippy. What's up, my brother? Good to see you. Rain Man coming. Rain Man coming. Rain Man. Rain. What's up, bro, brother? So good to see you. Now today he said two, two. Everybody hit the like button for me one time. One, two, three. Chit your pie. One, two, three. Chit your pie. Can you hit the like button, please? Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Hit that like button, y'all. Let's get them likes up. Come on now, let's do it. I know you can do it. Let's go ahead and get them likes up, y'all. I'm talking about. I'm telling you about today. Our show is five signs. She might be cheating on you. If she cheat on you, she may beat on you. If she beat on you, she may eat on you. If she beat on you and she eat on you, she may flee on you. Beat on you? <laughs> flee. She may flee from you. Okay. But look, man, always be diligent in your relationship. Have your eyes open. Have your ears open. Whenever something comes up, if there is anything, this to me again, I'm gonna say it again. If there is anything unusual if there's anything out of the ordinary don't let it slide okay and you might not bring it up right immediately but you make a mental note or you make a physical note sometimes okay she said she said that uh she she has some issues but she didn't want to discuss it write that down that's important you might not want to bring it up right now but okay uh a week later two days later she's still acting funky um excuse me uh sheila uh you know uh, i remember uh, last week you told me I had some issue on you know did you want to just you didn't want to discuss right then but I noticed your behavior and it's really different can, can you can you explain what's going on with 
You know, that's how you do. You be intelligent, you be thoughtful, because you don't want to accuse anybody of anything. You, but you want to have an open line of what? Clear, concise, complete communication. Crystal clear. That's the object of a, of a relationship between a man and a woman. Uh, they have to have crystal clear communication so that the lines are open, honest, no deceitful, no conceitness, none of that stuff that you are just trying to maintain and talk to each other in love. L to the O to the V E E. Love, baby. That's what it is, man. You love it, right? Huh? Or, 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 excuse me, excuse me. You just want to sex her up, okay? You a sex pet? <laughs> Come on, man. Let's be real. Let's go around to everybody. Easy. Hit the like button for me around time. One, two, three. Chit chip. Pow, yeah. One, two, three. Chit chip. Hit that like button, y'all. Murphy, hit easy. I remember that live. That was, that's why it's best to stay. Yeah, it's best to stay out of that type talking about people. I mean, he wasn't talking about it. He just asked, how are they doing? That's, that's the basic question. So I, I try to keep loggers uh, off names out of my mouth as much as possible. Except there's an unusual circumstance, you have to bring them, bring it up. Somebody dies, something crazy happened. That has to be talked about, but talked about in a in a very very uh, respectful manner. Okay, that's what I try to do, and that's what I would want for others to do with me. But a lot of times, I heard some stuff some people don't say it about me, man. <laughs> I'm playing with you. They say everything, but I don't care. You know, I know I know who I am. First of all, I know whose I am. Okay, I'm a child of God. That's who I. That's whose I am. I'm his. I'm his child. And because I know that, I also know the scripture tells me in Isaiah that no weapon formed against me shall what? Prosper. And the scripture tells me that any tongue that rises up against me in judgment, the Lord shall defeat. Okay? I understand that. I got that principle uh, uh, written in the corners of my mind, embedded in my mentality, in my spirituality. So nobody can make me, nobody can shake me, nobody can take me but the Lord. Because I am his own. I am his own. <laughs> Let's go. Round chain by the easy one nation of group. Love who we got. Smooth. He said, I would not say that name person, but it sounds like long, long running, long rhyme Sunday. Okay, I'm sorry. Let me start again. I've messed this up. I will not say the name of the person, but it sounds like a long rhyme running Saturday late night show. Okay. But I love being on the train. So I promise I will never say, hey man, don't you don't have to promise me anything, man. Just be be yourself. Uh, and be true to yourself. And you did you didn't do anything wrong. You mentioned uh, someone you were concerned about the status of someone. You hadn't seen him about him or heard about him for a while. You said, "How are you doing?" You opened up. You brought up a question for discussion. A, a, a very very uh, innocent question. You weren't degrading them. You weren't uh, uh, talking bad about them. You weren't insulting them. You just asked a very innocent question. However, you put a <laughs> put a blogger name with there, and apparently the person that told a lie was one of their buddies, okay? That's what's going to happen. If you hear you say something, they're going to say, well, he was talking about you bad, man. Because <laughs> what happens is uh, how we perceive things are not necessarily how it is in actuality. So the perception of what you said was negative in his mind. And that negative perception that he apprehended, he delivered to the other vlog, vlog okay? So so I, I try to stay away from that as much as possible. But let me put it like this. If I find out a, a vlogger is dogging me out on a show, you think I'm gonna stay out of that? Nah, it's gonna be on like Donkey Kong. I ain't playing a game. You, you come on, you you dog me out, and I'm not gonna say nothing back. Nah, it's gonna be on, baby, like Donkey Kong until we get it straight. Yeah, I'm not I'm not gonna cuss them or none of that, but I'm gonna defend my rights. I'm gonna defend who I say, who I am. If it's if it let's put it like this. if what they say about me is incorrect, I will defend myself. If it's if it's true, I got nothing to say. Yeah. Let him talk. Ride train, Bobby DG, one nation, a group of love. Who we got? Who sound? He's I already have my all my needs. I already have all my meds ready. I just need to get my traveler's insurance. Okay. Um uh traveler's insurance. I I'm not sure that's that I think they may have I'm, I'm not sure. I think they may have done away with that. I gotta look it up. I think somebody told me the other day, maybe a couple few weeks ago, that they had done away with the need to have the traveler's insurance. But it's always good to have it, man, whether they you have that required or not. But I would get it anyway. Okay. Ride train by the DC one day channel boomer love. Remember here, he said he came from Facebook and only shows up on your, your screen, by Okay, okay, I got you. I got you. He only shows up. That's why I couldn't I couldn't get him out. He on Facebook, he died on YouTube. Okay. All right, all right, okay. Russ, if you're still listening, man, please don't come on people's show if you got a problem with what the topic is. 
don't come on there, Russ, because you look like you look like a clown and you look like a troller. Russ Carrier, don't come on this show anymore. Okay. I'm warning you. If you have to troll this show, stay off of the show. We don't need people like you to troll our show, okay? Russ, if you have a show, I will never troll your show. Why would you do that to me, Russ Carrier? Huh? You got a problem, man? Because I'm not the one to mess with, Russ. You got a problem? You deal with your problem and get it resolved before you come on somebody's show and ask a crazy question, okay? LinkedIn approved of the show. They approved. They gave me a perfect right to come on the show, and I, I'm taking advantage of it. Now, Russ, I would suspect that if I was Caucasian, maybe you would never make those accusations. You know, you would never say, how is this relevant to business networking? It's not relevant to business networking. You know that. So why would you mention something like that, Russ? You're trying to be a troll. I do not need trolls on this show. Russ, watch yourself. Okay. Thank you. And don't come back on this show again unless you until you get some sense. Okay, Russ. All right. Let's go. I forgot where we were. Um. Okay, hold on, y'all. I gotta get back where I was. Messing with that food. Um, let's see. That's okay. Murphy, uh, he came back. From, okay, yeah. Uh, he, he came back from Facebook. Yeah, y'all okay, got you. All right, Terry Fleming, Ryan Train, who we got? He said, I've tried to enter into a relationship, but I love me more than I do being hooked up. Okay. Hey, it's, it's okay, man. To thine own self, be what? True. Okay. I mean, that's, if you, you're perfectly honest. You're saying, I love myself. More than being hooked up, was bond with somebody, connected. It's okay, man. I've tried, but I love being by myself. You know, everybody's not necessarily will have a mate in this world to be hooked up to. Okay, you might you're the type of person you just like to have friends and acquaintances, but you enjoy your quiet time, you enjoy your alone time, you enjoy your freedom to come and go and speak and do whatever you want to do. And sometimes you enjoy the company of females or, or friends in your life. It's okay. But you don't want that all the time. And you have found a, a life where you're satisfied with you. You know, <laughs> you're happy with you alone, you know, in the Lord. You know, it's okay, man. Everybody's not everybody's not like you, but it's okay to be you, right? As long as what you're doing is not injuring yourself or someone else, it's perfectly fine to do what you do. Okay, and don't feel ashamed. Don't let people shame you. You ain't got nobody around with you. <laughs> don't, don't let people run that shame game on you, man. Because people will try to shame you, man. There's a low, whole lot of haters out there, man. You know? People need to stop learning how to hate and appreciate. You know what I'm saying? He said, I don't I don't know how I can make this work. I stopped calling her and I stopped going to see her now. Oh, 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 oh. that's some big news there, my, my guy. Okay, y'all heard what he said? I'm going to go back. He said, I have tried to enter into a relationship, but I love me more than I do being hooked up. I don't know how I can make this work. I stopped calling her and I stopped going to her now. Okay. So uh, let me make sure I'm understanding. So you stop calling her and you stop going to see her. Do, can you? And so you're saying that your reasoning for stopping and stop calling her and stop going to see her was simply because you decided that you love you you love yourself more than being in a relationship. Okay. So are, are you serious about what you're saying? I mean, in other words, are, are you just trying to make that a reason to get out of the relationship? Did you not is, is, is it a possibility that you didn't like her? Is it a possibility that she was too aggressive with you? Is it a possibility that she was too possessive of you? You know, let's let's be more specific about why, because it's a general term. You say, I love. You said, I have tried, but I love me more than I do being hooked up. Okay. Tell me what the love me means. Because if love me means you don't like people being possessive of you, okay, that's fine. But be more specific. I love me more than I do being hooked up is a general phrase or a general statement. If you are specific about, you need to know exactly why you don't want to deal with that woman. Okay. And then and, and you, you need to be specific about it. That's how you can learn yourself better and then not only should you learn yourself better but you have to speak to that woman i would suggest you speak to that woman and not what you're doing to her is called ghosting you're ghosting her you shut off all communication like that <laughs> you don't go see her you don't call her you don't call her no more you don't go see her no more and so she's like what did i do why well, I, I, it's happened again 
He just stopped calling me. He don't love me. She gonna have some kind of. She gonna feel some kind of way, you know. Unless you know she was cheating on you. <laughs> I don't know, man. You know, you gotta be more specific, man. Give me more specifics, and not necessarily me, but give yourself more specifics. What? Why? You say I love me more, but this because the reason why you love me more could it be that she was not loving you the way you wanted to be loved? Could it be that you don't really know how to you want to be loved? It's a whole lot of stuff, man. And I'm just trying, I'm not just trying to come down on you, Terry. I'm trying to say this so everybody can understand. Uh, be specific with your reasoning on in any relation when you terminate a relationship or when you enter into a relationship. The more specific you are, the more detailed that you understand yourself, knowledge of you. Okay. Knowledge of you, and then you can explain your reasoning to the person that you're dumping because. It is, it is important that you give her an understanding of why you terminated that relationship. And so, all you have to say, look, I've been I've been dealing with this for a while. I really think you're a nice person, but because this these reasons, and be specific and be honest. Okay, be number one. I don't I didn't have I don't feel I had enough time for me. Number two, uh, I feel that you were too possessive. Number three, I, you know you know just going down the list. But but be honest. Okay. Don't come up with no crazy stuff because people gonna know when you're trying to lie. Be honest. And she'll know that you're being honest when you say it because she's been dealing with you. Okay. All right, man. Let's go around train by DC. One of my love. Who got smooth? He said, I still need to get the COVID test. Also, how do I go about getting the three year visa? COVID test. Okay. Uh, COVID, you have to have a, a COVID test before you come in. Okay. Uh, uh, you have to have a COVID test, not the vaccine, but. You have to have a COVID test 24 hours or uh, 72 hours before you get it. 24 hours before you get it. Make sure you get that done or you won't get in the country. But they'll right now, they'll, they'll let you in now because they made so many concessions. They'll let you in now, but you'll have to get it at the airport before they proceed to your next destination. Okay. So there's somebody, somebody leading on the COVID test. Um, okay. I, I don't know where you're getting this three year visa from, man. Where did you get that from? There, there's no such thing as a three-year visa in the Philippines. Get that in your mind, ladies and gentlemen, please. I don't know where you're getting this from. Where did you read this? Tell me, because I, I need to know about it. If there's a three, <laughs> I've, been in, I've been in eight years, man. I haven't seen a three-year visa offered in this country yet. <laughs> I put that term, get, well, I'll give me, I need me go down to the Bureau of Immigration, say, hey, hey, ma'am, please, just come here, ma'am. I need me a three-year visa. <laughs> she said, get out of here. <laughs> He goes, what you talking about, sir? Three years. We don't have no three. What you talking about? You know, you got to be specific and understand what you want. Um, so I, I don't know what you mean when you say a three-year visa. Okay, so get uh, give me some more understanding of that. Uh, there's several the visas that most people get when they come to the Philippines. It's called the Temporary Visitor's Visa, or TVV. T like Tom, victory, victory. Temporary Visitor's Visa. That means you're allowed to stay in this country for up to 59 days. And and after the 59th day, you have to you still want to stay. You have to apply for extension to get a temporary visitor's visa. You only need a passport and some type of government ID from where the country came from, and make sure that that country you came from is on the TVV list. Okay, the United States is on the TVV list for the Philippines. There are some countries that are not on the temporary visitors list. They cannot do the TVV. Okay, they have to have an actual physical visa. Okay. So I, I, I don't know what the three-year visa is. I, I think you're mistaken on that, but uh, give me some clarity on what you want, and we'll help you out. Okay, man, you good? You good, my brother? So I got to say, they don't get mad. I mean, I'm just telling you, hey, I tell you like it is, man. I don't be, I don't be playing. That's why people can't stand me. <laughs> some people can't stand me because I tell them like it is. I said, what you say, man? <laughs> I got to break it down to you, you know. And so I'm this kind of guy like this. I'm going to give you some love. Okay, I'm going to love you, man. Much love to you. But it's gonna be some tough love. I don't play no game with you. I don't be, well, you know, you did that. Nah, so look, man, what you say? You need to do better. That's how I do. I give you tough love and I give it to you straight. Some people can't handle it, you know. But, but when we was on, when we was on, I, I, if, you, if you were in sports, you ever played any sports in high school or, or college, then you know when you're on a team, that's how you coach. A good coach would talk to you tough because they need to reach you. They need to reach your mentality so they can pull out the best athletic skills you have in you and pull it out and make you do well on the field you know so and they gotta they gotta be hard so that's the same mentality i have i played soccer in school and i had a, a, a female coach she was she was good she was from france so she knew about soccer 
And she, she when she we when she wasn't looking, we would get goof off. And, go, hey. and then when she come around there, she said, "What are y'all doing?" Hey, get her, and she would get get, get on that field, and start going. We got to do it. so same thing. Be strong, be tough, but I'm direct. Let's go, Ron Jane. Who we got? Murphy. It sounds like you're set. You're setting your ways, Terry. Maybe it may be better to stay single. Um, that's a, that's a strong possibility for Terry. I think that he's not interested in maybe marrying or maybe perhaps having a live-in situation. That's inter- that's, that doesn't interest him. He only wants an occasional outing for a friend. And I say friend. I don't say sexual mate. And all that. I said friend. He wants to go maybe go to dinner, have a cup of coffee sometimes, sit down, you know, I go to meal. I mean, go to movie maybe occasionally. And that's it. Every now and then, pick up the phone and say, hey, you doing okay? Good. Bye-bye. What's wrong with that? I mean, it's nothing like Terry Terry is into his lifestyle, and it's nothing wrong with that. He loves how he lives. He loves his where he lives. He loves his friends. He's got friends and family. He loves them. But he's not, he don't have to be all up in somebody's face all the time. And he don't want somebody up in his face all the time, if you understand what I'm saying. And, and so I, I think that the statement you're making, Murphy, is, is pretty, pretty much accurate. If you're like that. And there's nothing again. There's nothing wrong with being like that. If that that's okay for you, maybe you're not ready to settle down or in a living relationship or a marital relationship right now. And it's time for you to recognize that and say, "No, nah, that's that's not my thing right now. I still got to work on me." Okay, let's go around train Bobby Eastman National Group One Love. Knock Kakalaki, what's up, my brother? So good to see you in the house. In the house, what's up? What's up? Martin Roll Smith in the house, in the house. Martin Roll Smith. In, what's up, Martin, bro? He said, uh, hello, Bobby D. Live in the Philippines from Greensboro, North Kakalaka. Greensboro, man. This is a man from Greensboro, North Kakalaka. Uh, I'm from the south side. He's from the north side. What's up, man? Hey, so good to see you riding the train. Bobby Lee's one nation. This man just came back from the Philippines. He had a thriller in Manila with his lady, and she he found out that she ain't shady. <laughs> She ain't shady at all. Let's go ride train. Who we got? Doc Cat, like you said, amazing Monroe is in Mon- amazing Monroe is in the house. In the house. What's up? What's up, amazing Monroe in the house? And you all right, man? You feeling good about your trip? You just came back from. He just came back from Manila. He spent some time with his uh, fiance. They're going to get married, and uh, they had a lovely Christmas together. And uh, he's looking to bring her to the USA. Mm-hmm. And then he's applying for what's called a K-1 visa. Now, for those of you that may or may not know, the K-1 visa is a visa that allows a foreign man to bring the, the Filipina that he's going to marry over to this country. And they're allowed to stay there for ni- up to 90 days okay, on that visa. And within that 90-day period, they have to do what? Get married. Okay? They allow them a 90-day window get married after they're married but then he can apply for a green card after a certain amount of i think a certain amount of months and years whatever and so she can stay there permanently okay so he's he's starting a new life man i'm i'm happy so our character lackey is the opposite of what what uh terry fleming is he's he's ready to hook up book up and cook up and sugar up. <laughs> he got it lady he's ready let's go around here we got murphy he said, hello Monroe. what's up Amazing Monroe from North Kakalaka. What's up, man? <laughs> He's alive in the North Kakalaka. What's up? He said, hello, Sir Murphy. What's up, man? You good? You good? Ride train by the Lisi One Nation of the Group of Love. Kakalaka. He said, hello, Sir Terry Fleming. What's up, Rain, man? You good, man? Let's see it make it rain up in here. <laughs> we got Roger Murphy. He said, yes, I agree. You're amazing, sir. <laughs> he said that with some shades on, too. <laughs> Let's go, Ride train. We got Life in the no kicker, like he said, What's up, smooth? You good, man? Eye on you, eye on you. Hey, everybody got an eye on smooth because he don't, he the man of the hour. You know, and told us, he, I'm gonna pick on his move. He told us he was coming to it, coming this month to the Philippines. <laughs> now he done changed the story, y'all. <laughs> he said, Well, you know, I afford to come there for her birthday, but I'm not gonna spend all that money, but I'm coming next month. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see what happens next month. Let's go, Ryan Train, Bobby Lee. You want that group on up? Okay, like he said, congrats to Murphy Hayes for number one. Murphy Hayes wasn't playing, man. He said, I miss Bobby D so much, man. I'm going to be the first one on the show today. Hey, man, we'll miss you too. We had a long layoff, guys. Uh, first time ever 
as you all know, that be with me for a while. First time ever I've laid out that long to uh, for the ho- over the holidays that is because I've never done it before because I'm always I'm always pretty much here most of the time. But ever since you see, we need to take time for ourselves, and she was right. We need to take time for ourselves uh, during the holiday period, and we had a great time together. My family time together, I'm a great time. Everything was better than we had expected. But I'm back now. And guess what? Not only am I back, but I'm still black. <laughs> yeah, I'm black and I'm proud. Say it loud. I'm black and I'm proud. Thank you so, brother James Brown. Ah, uh, Kakalak. He's just congrats, smooth. What's up, man? What's up, I like you. Congrats to you, man. You good? You good? Smooth said. He said yes. I have enough money to come, but things went bad. But when the dog sitter said no, I found out I have to share the Air, Airbnb. Okay, okay. So he has a dog sitter, and she said no. Okay. So have you considered taking him to a dog uh, animal shelter or a dog uh, animal care facility? Many uh, 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 doctors for vet veterinarians for, uh, have animal shelters that you can stay and keep your animal in, in care for up to a week, two weeks, a month, whatever your, your flight or your time would be. So that would be one option. If you can't find a good dog sitter, take him to a veterinarian and ask them what would they charge to allow your animal to stay there until you got back. And they would definitely take care, very good care. It may cost some money, more money than a sitter would, you know, but you know, uh, that's that's what you gotta do. Uh, you, you know, people not gonna, and keep in mind, so when people ain't nobody gonna take care of your dog like you do. Yeah? They gonna give them something to eat, give them something to drink. As far as, walk, as, far as walking them, no. <laughs> they gonna walk, they gonna walk up to the refrigerator and get something, that's it. <laughs> He said, I find I have to share. You, you have to share Airbnb. Why you have to share Airbnb? Is that is that what you bargain? Is that what you asked to do? Or, or the Airbnb telling you, sorry, sir, I know you just paid for this Airbnb, but you got to share it. Is that what they're telling you? Let me know, Well, Let me know. Roger, who we got? Cockalacky said, for number two, smooth. You, you did it right, tight, long, strong. The number two won't do for us here. Oh, no. Number two won't do. But smooth sound will do oh, every time. Let's go, Roger. Bobby DeLee, see one day, young rule love. Who we got? Uh, this movie said, hey, Mr. Life, what's up? Thank you. Hey, Life in the Kakalaki is here, man. He turned it out. He's doing right, tight, long, strong. Ryan Chang, who we got? Murphy, he said, what's up, man? What's up, Monroe? You good, man? So good to see. I like that name, Monroe. <laughs> it's a two-syllable word. Monroe. Mon, if, if I was in the Caribbean, I would say, well, it's Mon means man in the Caribbean. Caribbean. Man, Mon, row. <laughs> man, you better row that boat. <laughs> Let's go. I don't know what I'm talking about. Let's go. Uh, Terry Fleming said, yes, sir, Murphy. I think I'm happier being alone, and I need the, then I, then I need the companionship. Okay. Let's break that statement down. Terry Fleming is, is admitting that he's happier alone by himself rather than uh, being, than, then the need for companionship is not as strong as this need to be independent and self-reliant upon his own self and not in a relationship, go in a, in a long-term relationship. He just wants friends. It's okay, it's okay man. Uh, I haven't met a lot of guys like that. I'll be honest. I haven't met a lot of guys like that. A lot of guys, most of the guys I meet, they're either one or two things. They want their sex pad. They want to bang everything in the world. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> They want to go all over the world and, and taste this and taste that. That's called sex pet. The other guys I meet are just ordinary guys that they want to meet somebody nice and settle down with them, whether it's a living relationship or marriage. That's what they want. Okay. Those are the majority of people, I, the types, two types of people I meet mostly out here. The type of individual that Terry is, where he's just happy by himself. He wants to be friends with people, but he don't want to take it no further than that. I don't meet them, those type of people, uh, that often out here. So it's a, it's a pleasure when I meet somebody that has this, because it takes discipline for that, ladies and gentlemen, whether you know it or not. It takes true discipline and a strong mind, strong attitude, and a strong mentality to resist all of the things that a female could give you. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> you got to have it. You got to be together, you know? To resist what a female, some females can put it on you, man. I mean, <laughs> they can lay it on your heart. 
Yeah, but I'm saying it's for him to be uh, honest with himself and honest with the world, honest with the show. And so I like that. I, I think that's an admirable quality that he can tell the truth about himself and don't be lying. And he tried, right? He tried in the relationship with, with the young lady. She was, I think he was, she was Cuban, right? I mean, Spanish or something like that. And he tried it with her, but it, he just felt that it was not comfortable. You know, uh, whether it was her, whether, whether it was she herself or what she was doing, how she was looking, how she, uh, you know, how she was behaving. I don't know. Only he knows that. But whatever the reason, she's decided that, no, I'm better off by myself. So it's okay, man. I, I, if you, for those of you that are out there listening to this, if you don't want to be hooked up, booked up, cooked up with a woman, uh, you know, it's okay, man. Don't, don't, don't get down on yourself. Don't let anybody shame you. Well, you ain't got nobody. <laughs> nobody won't you. <laughs> don't, don't let the people shame you, man. I mean, then people will do that. Haters will do. Haters like to hate. And they'll come off on you like that. But don't let that get you down. You know who you are. You know whose you are. You know how you are. You're happier alone in your own. You have, he, he has he had a settled regimen. He, you know, would like some people get up in the morning, do their coffee, blah, 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 they had set day. And that's, he's happy with that. What's wrong with that? Nothing. Let's go around, change by believe she's one of those people up. Jerry Fleming, he said, hey, what's up, man? Okay, like, you good, man? So good to see you out today, buddy. We got Anthony Ligon, Anthony Ligon. What's up, Anthony? So good to see you on the train today. Bobby Lee, see one nation on the group of love. He said, what's up, Bobby Lee, two queen, DD, peace on to all the love train. Thank you so much, too, too. Everybody hit the like button one time, one, two, three. Chicha, party, one, two, three. Chicha, can you hit the like button, please? Please, man, please, sir. Hit the like button. Come on, now, let's hit that like button. One, two, three. Chicha Paya, one, two, three. Chicha Paya, hit that like button. Let's get them likes up. Come on now. Come on now. We got to get them likes up. I need them likes up. Let's go. Murphy, hey, what's up, brother? He said, Anthony Ligon. Anthony Ligonza. <laughs> you changed your name. Anthony Ligon, what's up, man? You good? That's a typo, y'all. He said, you good, man? So good to see you right in the house, right in the house today. We got good man, big baller, shy collar, Terry Fleming. Smooth sound all aboard the two, two. Hit that like button for me, y'all. Hit that like button for me one time. One, two, three. Chit your pie out. One, two, three. Chit your pie out. Hit that like button. Let's go. Round train by the least one day. Y'all group with up. No, I can't. Look at He said, what's up, Anthony? You good, man? See, that's how we do on the train, man. For those, for those of you that are new here, on the outside looking in, that's how we greet. This is a community where we meet, we greet, and we do it in love, kindness, peace, and power. Oh, Lord, I said that. Y'all better write that one down. <laughs> I said we do it in love, kindness, peace, and power. You know why we do that? Because we encourage each other. Each one teach one. Each one reach one. I encouraged Terry Fleming today. Yeah, I did. I encouraged him to live his life and don't deal with the strife. Don't deal with the haters. Okay? And the baiters. Leave them alone. Live your life. I encouraged Smooth Sound today. You know, do your thing, but keep your mouth shut. <laughs> Don't tell everybody your business, man. Be be discreet. Don't go around and say, I'm gonna be there the next week. I'm gonna if you be discreet. When you get your tickets, you got your book, you got your phone, that's when you start opening up your mouth. Be discreet. I encourage people to do what's the best for them as I see it. Now you may say, Bobby, you advice, you bad, bad advice, you gotta Okay. You don't have to do it. I just give you the best advice I can. Let's go around train by the one that's your group up. And the least my brother not calculate. <laughs> Well, okay, like, what's up, man? So good to see you in the house today. Ride train by the Lizzie One Nation. Live and now, okay, like, he said, hey, Bobby Lee, Lizzie. Live in the Philippines, I have a question. When you met Lisa D, did, you, did her family have it? Excuse me. Okay, yes, y'all. I'm glad it came out the top and not the bottom, aren't you? <laughs> I'll drink the coffee. Hold on. Okay. He says, uh, <clears throat> I have a question. When you met Lisa D, did you did did her family have expectations for you? Do you mind sharing what the expectations were or was? Um, when I met her family, uh, when I met Lisa D, uh, I, I think and, and let me, let me, I'm gonna put this in a general statement so so you can get it right. In general, ladies and gentlemen, whenever you're a foreign man and you're interested in a Filipina. You have to not only deal, she's a good Filipino, right? 
I'm not talking about the scammers and the illegit people out there. I'm not legitimate. You have to deal with their family. Okay. A good Filipino will always want you to do what? Meet with their family. Whether it's the mom and pop, sister and brothers, whoever her, whoever's in an immediate circle as a family, they want you to meet them. That's just the way they are. It's traditional and they, there's nothing wrong with that. I, I encourage that. Okay. So so uh, when I met Lisa D, um, as far as expectation, let me put it again in general. Expectations as far as Filipinos are concerned, as far as foreigners are concerned, there's always some expectations. Okay. Now I'll list some of the expectations, but I'm not going to talk about what they, my family expected of me because I actually don't know. Okay. I, I never asked them that, so I don't know. <laughs> but I could tell you in general what most Filipinos think of foreign people when they meet them. Number one, they think you're rich, super rich, multi-millionaire. You can do anything. You can make it rain here, there, everywhere. Okay. When somebody thinks that you're rich, that means you got money and they got nothing. So what do they want from you? Monta, haunt. They want you to reach their palm a little bit or help them buy them there. But you know, that's, that's what most of them want. I'm not gonna say my family wanted that, but that's that's in general what most people want. They have set expectations of foreigners when you get into the family. Because I told you, I've told you on numerous times, when you marry a Filipina, you you marry the family most of the time. However, you don't have to you don't have to adhere to those expectations. Okay. I didn't, you know, if they had that in their mind about me, when we got married at our reception, this is what I did. I got up and said, look, I love my family members, new family members, I love my wife, but, and they, this blew everybody out the water. I said, but I'm not gonna be no ATM. <laughs> they were, I was like, they were like, <laughs> you know, and, 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 and after I said that, everybody looked at me like I was crazy. <laughs> But I, I said, I, I, I said what I meant. I meant what I said, you know. And, and you know, I, I told you I'm direct, right? I get straight to it. I don't beat around the bush. And so I have never had, I, you know, slight things here and there. But I, what I did was I this. I told people that wanted things from me or whatever. I said, look, if you want anything from me, you got to deal with Lisa D. And that rhyme, you got to go through her. Whatever you want, talk to her. She, I gave Lisa D. knew what I would do and what I won't do. I will help people for emergencies. You know, if somebody about to die, or die or whatever, hospital stuff like that, that we can verify. We know, you know, we know for sure, for sure, for sure. Stuff like that. Other than that, I'm not a loan factory. Because when you loan people money out here, they never pay you back. Or if they pay you back, it may be five years later when they hit the lottery or something. Crazy stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? So I, I don't, I don't, I don't get into that. Let me, let me get now. I do give and I do give on a regular basis. You know, I give uh, consistently, and so does Lisa D. So we don't get into that. Uh, I expect you to do this, I expect you to do that. And I can tell you for a fact, Lisa D helps her family. She's been helping, I've been helping Lee since I met her, she helped, her. She helped her family with it as well. Now, even when we got married, after we got married, she continues to help her mom and pop every month on a monthly basis. So she might buy food, she might get money, whatever they need. And they have their own, um, her mom has a type of temporary business type of business and the dad does the farming. So they get stuff, but it's not enough. It's never enough. So she helps them out, you know, and, and that's, 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 that's what she's supposed to, that's what she wants to do. No problem with that. And so uh, they will have expectations of you and they expect you to be, uh, they expect you to be different. They don't, a lot of them, a lot of them want you to be just like them, but you can't be like them because you're not Filipino. You'll never be Filipino. So whatever you do, don't try to be like them. I mean, deal with your, how you are, where you are. You're an American citizen. There's certain things you're going to put up with, certain things you're not. You know? And what happens all too more often than not, when you're in a Filipino society, if you reject some of their customs and ways because it's abhorrent to you, it's terrible to you, they think you're crazy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You, know, you don't want to eat with them, whatever. They're eating some, uh, what's the stuff they eat? The boar, the, the, they eat the little birds. They cook them whole and they give them to you whole to eat. You don't want that. I don't eat that. You know, they're like, what's wrong with him? <laughs> so just be nice about it. I'm sorry. I don't, I'm fool. Somebody else make up some excuse, but, but you know, be you, man. Okay. I hope that got some of your questions. But uh, again, when in our family, we never had this. Oh, well, you're going to do this. You're going to do this. I want you to do this. Because they they knew they knew where I stood. And Lisa D had talked to them too. So we didn't have any, many, many problems of them expecting us to do this, do this, do this. You know. That, that, if that's what you're getting into, you got to stand up. 
and you got to talk to your ladies, look, this is your family. You know what I can do and what I can't do. You deal with that. And don't come to me. Don't have everybody come to me for the handout because I'm not playing that game. That's how you got to do. Let's go around train, Bobby. Who we got? Anthony, he said, nowhere safe, nowhere safe here in the States anymore, Bobby. He, a six-year-old boy took a gun. Yeah. I heard Murphy he sent me an email about that. A six-year-old boy took a gun to school and shot his teacher. Yeah. Lord help us. Yeah. Lord help us. Help that child. Uh, how would you raise a six-year-old to carry a gun to school? You need to help the parents, too. Parents need to be held accountable for that. That son's actions, the parents should be held accountable for his actions. How do you let a six-year-old put a, a handgun in his bag, back bag and take it to school? Now, they, that, they're not monitoring the child properly, and they, they may not be raising him properly. I don't know. Of course, uh, uh, Obviously, there's something wrong with the child. Any six-year-old would not take a real loaded gun, and he knew what he was doing. No thinking that he didn't know. Just because he was six years, well, you know, he, he he's a kid. He, he didn't know what he was doing. He just playing. He was just playing with the gun. No, you know, he knew what he was doing. The teacher, he got pissed off with the teacher. <laughs> so all of them trying to be, but he got mad with the teacher, and he wanted to. Shoot. He he's seen that so many times, you know, on TV and these little games, and he acted it out in this in for real life. I told you, you cannot act out on on things that's in your mind. Because it will cause you bodily harm or cause somebody else bodily harm. You have to have good standards and values not to act out on your crazy thoughts. And all of us get crazy thoughts now and then. You know? But you got to deal with it in the right way. This young kid didn't have the moral fiber or, or the mature, maturity to deal with this problem to teach you properly. So he pulled out a pistol. And so I hope this young kid, I don't know, they wouldn't give his name, but I hope he gets the treatment he needs. Because he needs treatment, he needs help, and if the parent, his parents haven't been giving it to him. They need to get to somebody. Need to talk to them too. Give them some parental teaching training. But yeah, man, it's sad when you see a six-year-old doing what adults do. This that means that we have a, a gun-happy society. Shoot first and ask questions later. Shoot first and try to resolve it later. You know. Who does that? America does. America, put the weapon down. America, take the bullets and throw them away. America, deal with your issues in a peaceful uh, manner rather than in, in a violent manner. America, put the weapons down. Let's go. Ryan Train, Bobby Lee, one. Who we got? Maybe. He's an amazing one. Bro. One minute you see him, the next minute he's gone. <laughs> he's a one minute man. I don't know, man. Monroe come when he's ready. He like, I ain't being bothered with them. <laughs> Can he be out gone two weeks, three weeks? He might come back one time in a month and say, hey, what's up? <laughs> but you know what, man? It's all good. It's all good. I deal with them when they, when they come in. I deal with them when they're not away. When they're away, you know? I'm like this, man. You know, you, you can visit me or you don't, you know, because it's your loss. Because I'm, I give it to you straight. I give you the stuff you need. And you don't want to receive it. That's all on you. Let go. <laughs> Who you got? Uh, he said, Calculate, he said, yes, Andy Liggins. I believe the parents are in fault for that, and they should go to jail with the six-year-old. I don't want the six-year-old in jail, first of all. I think he needs to be treated. He needs mental treatment, sociological treatment, because he's he did it. He knew what he was doing, but he did it. He knew what he was doing in an erroneous manner. He acted out something that he's seen others do, and, and that uh, either on TV or through games. And that's his his mind is not focusing on where it should be. And that's due to the parental training that he's received or lack of parental training that he was given or not given by his parents. So should his parents be uh, held accountable? Of course, 100%. That's my opinion. I think his parents need to be held accountable. They failed his child, okay? Bottom line, point blank. They failed that little boy. They failed him or, or else, uh, so how, or else how could he go to school with a loaded gun in his backpack? and pull it out and shoot a teacher. They failed that child. And as a result of their failure, they need to be punished. And along with their punishment, they should have training and retraining on how to deal with their child. The child needs the parents. You no, know? every child needs mom and dad, but mom and dad failed him and they need to pay pay a price for that as well. Let's go around chain, Bobby, who we got? And the lady, hey, I got you, man, I got you, man. Ron Jane, who we got? 
Remember, hey, he said I sent Bobby the video. Yeah, he sent me the video about it, man. I might, I might do something on it. Let me see. I, I might do something on it to bring it to everybody's attention because this is something major that I don't, I have never seen this in my lifetime. That a six-year-old kid would bring a loaded weapon to school and pull it out because he's angry about what some the teacher said and shoots the teacher. The teacher had enough strength to to pull herself, to drag herself to the office to get help. And had she not done that, she would have wasted away right in the classroom. And they said that she had a very, very critical wound in her chest. I think it was a chest. And that she was uh, almost could have you know, went into way. But they say she's beginning to do better now. So let's pray for that young lady, that teacher, that she can pull out. Uh, this is sad, man. We're, we're, you know, the very, very bad indictment on the United States of America when you see a six-year-old pulling out a gun on a teacher, okay? I feel sorry for the teachers that have to deal with these type of people when, in, in school today. When I was coming up, that would never even be thought about, you know? The, the worst thing we could do in classroom was talk too much or uh, uh, spitball somebody in the back of the head. <laughs> you know, you do a spitball, you like somebody, whatever, stuff like that. So simple stuff, man, but now, Somebody make you mad, you pull out a Uzi, you pull out a weapon, you pull out a pistol. Come on, man. Well, what's going on? Yeah. I, I, let's go back. It goes back to this. How are we raising our children? We're raising them like heathens. Okay? I'm sorry. I'll be, be honest with you. When I was raised, my mama didn't raise me like no heathen. My mother was a God-fearing church woman and my grandmother. They took me to church. I might didn't get nothing. I didn't, I didn't care back in them days. But they took, I didn't think I was getting nothing, but all that church talk and all that my mama talk, my grandmama talk, get right in my head. And it, it keep me to this day, keep me from uh, danger and keep me from hurting people. So how you raise your child? The Bible says that you train up a child in the way he should go when he is old. That's in Proverbs. He will not do what? Depart from his training. That's true in my case. I was, I was trained to be right, walk right, do right, eat right, be good. You know, I'm not always good, <laughs> but I try because I can't get away from that training. Let's go around and train. We got. I agree. No, I agree. I got you, man. Cocky like he said, she cheating on you. She will not have time for you. Period. That's what's up. No, not necessarily true. <laughs> if she cheating on you, she'll make a little time for you. If you pay, if you says you send her the month, she get to send her five hundred dollars a month, and she cheating on you, she'll make them out five ten minutes for you. <laughs> You keep sending that money. As long as you send that money, you can make a little time for you. <laughs> well, if you ain't sending nothing, she ain't got no time for you. Let's go around chain. Who we got? Billy D, what's on, man? He said, can I get your advice? Recently, I met a Pino online, and she said she's 18. Now she tells me she is 17. Should I stop talking to her? Of course you should. Whether she's 18 or 17 is, be, is beyond the question. She can't prove it. Stop talking there because 18 is the legal age now, ladies. I think it's 18. Is it was it was uh 12. I think it moved up to 16. But even at any rate, a lie. She told you she may or may not have told you a lot. So the, because of that factor alone, cannot trust her. Okay. You never start a relationship off on a big lie because it's gonna eventually turn sour down the line. You see, be one lie leads to another and another and another and another and another. And before you know it, your whole relationship is one big fat lie. Okay. Let that girl go. Let's go right chain. Who we got? Murray, he said there's no instance left in the United States because there's so much corrupt. Yeah, man. Corruption is terrible. Moral corruption, financial corruption, any kind of corruption you can think of is rampant in the United States. And people say this is the home of the free land of the brave, home of the free corrupted and brave corrupted people. They do, you know, I just want let me put it like this. I love my country. Okay. Don't let me, don't get me wrong. Overall, I think it's the best country in the world to live in, to be a citizen of, okay? America, United States of America. And many other people think the same way. That's why the immigrants are trying to get there, right? From the South border. But there's issues that this country has. That has never been dealt with. You know, don't let me start. Let me, you don't know what I'm talking about, right? The issue about African Americans. Did you know that we, that, that this country, United States of a dog on America, 
had a Holocaust, you know, like the Jewish Holocaust. This country had a Holocaust on African Americans. They millions, millions of African Americans perished at the hands of this country in, in the Middle Passage, transferring us from Africa, stealing us from Africa to America. Many never made it. Many jumped off the boat. Many they couldn't because they couldn't be locked up, you know, damn being like an animal. So this this country has committed a Holocaust at, at the, at the, at, on, on African Americans and our ancestors, and they have never admitted it, and they have never come to terms with it, with the people that they took. Okay, until they come to terms with it, this country is never going to be blessed like it should be, or it could be, because the blessings of the Lord make of the rich. That's what the Bible says. Okay. If America really wants to be the richest nation in the world, the richest country, it could be way more than what it is. It has to acknowledge its sins to the people that's in this country. Let's go around train Bible ladies one nation go over up. And the least, I don't know how bros can forward flying first class to the Philippines. I checked from here in Detroit and I and I think it cost fifteen thousand. Yeah. Murphy Hill told me that the other day when he was here. He said the ticket for to uh, from um Philippines to from Detroit was ten thousand. I said, what? He said, business class is 8,000. I can buy a house in the Philippines. For <laughs> I know that's right. You boys big violent. Yeah, man. I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I guess where you where you look for your tickets. Um, if you go to the regular airlines um, offices or administration, you get the prices, highest prices. I recommend going to what's called consolidators. One of the biggest consolidators that I use is called ASAP tickets. And they, they go and they find like let's say a plane is fully fully loaded, and you know, not fully let's say a plane is not fully loaded. They find the empty seats in the plane, and they sell at a reduced rate. And so I find prices like that, but it's crazy, man. I wouldn't pay that kind of price. Let's go, Ron Chang. Who we got? Smoothie said, "Yeah, probably. God will get me there. I will have all. I have all the money. I just need to work some some ins and outs, or just bring my dog with me. Bring you can bring your dog with you. You're gonna pay for it. You know, it's costly, but uh, you know." Uh, some people bring dogs and animals here, but you have to pay a lot for that, you know? It's like buying another plane ticket. Let's go around train. Who we got? Mervais, I checked it. It's like 28000 round trip, depending on how fast you want to get there. Woo, 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 woo. Are you serious, man? 28000 Are you talking about dollars or pesos? What do you want? $28,000? No, that's, that's, that's crazy. $28,000 round trip? No, nah, you, you mean pesos, right? Let's go around train. Bobby, you see one that's trying to go run up? Smooth. He said, a lot of people think in my, I'm crazy when it comes to my dog, but she's all I have here. And one well-known fact, a dog is the only thing that will love you more than you love yourself. Probably true. Animals can be very uh, helpful and they can be very rehabilitative and they can be very therapeutic. therapeutic. They are very, they're dogs that uh, are therapy dogs. And you have them go to the nursing homes. You have dogs that assist blind people. Uh, people in wheelchairs, the helper dogs. Dogs are dogs can be one of man's best friends. The dog, that's what I say, right? So yeah, I understand your feeling for him. the dog. I've had some dogs. I don't have a dog here now, but I had dogs in the USA, and I love my dogs. Most all my dogs died. I didn't have them so long. They, you know, all of them went home. But and that's why I said I'm never get another because at this stage in my life, I don't want to be bothered with taking care of them. Because when I, when I got a dog, I took care. I took him to bed every six months, get their shots washed them and fed them and walked them twice a day that's a lot of work i don't want to do all that now you know what i'm saying i'm at that point in my time i don't want that i'd had that i've done that and i love dogs but uh no i understand your concern about loving your dogs because it become a part of your family and you want to make sure that they're taken care of. i understand that man that's probably the only thing you got on this earth that you feel loves you back yeah right man let's go right chain who we got murphy he said your dog is an emotional support dog it's understandable system. So yeah, he gives him some therapy. It, it keeps him relaxed. Yeah, he, there's somebody he can hold on to, and and, and be warm, warm and fuzzy, and breathing. And dogs are always smiling. You can yell at them. They'll they lay down for money, but as soon as they get through laying down, they come back smiling at you again. Dogs. That's how dogs are. Let's go around chain. Who we got? Moves. He said, "Uh, I love me girl. I love me girl. I love me girl. I love my girl." But she has a bad habit of buying wants over needs. That's most Filipinos do that, man. I don't know why. Most Filip, you know why? 
I'm tell you what, they can't handle money. They don't know how to handle money when they get it because they never have a lot. He said, I thought I heard or here, I thought I heard here on your chat about the visa. Huh? I didn't tell you, no, you didn't hear that here, brother. <laughs> don't play with me with that. You didn't hear me tell you no three year visa. I th okay, now I think I understand what you're saying. Okay, this is what you probably heard and you misconstrued what I said. Well, let me go over this again for you for you numb skulls out there. <laughs> I'm sorry, man, but you, you just a dim wit. Nah, I'm sorry. <laughs> or you nimrods out there. Nah. <laughs> All right. Well, you guys out there, let me tell you this. When he says three year visa, this is what he's referring to temporary visitors' visas, which I talked to you about earlier in the show. That's what he's talking. He's calling the three year visa. By the reason why he's saying that because this visa, the temporary visitors visa, or the TVV, allows you to stay in the Philippines up to three years. That's why he got the term three-year visa. Don't call it that because there is no three-year visa. Okay, it's called the temporary visitors visa. If you say I want a three-year visa, they say get out of here, sir. Don't know, don't use that term. All right, that means that you can stay here up to three years. From but every month you have to do what? renew your visa and get a re extension on the visa to let you stay another 59 days. You can do that for up to three years. After that third year, on the last day of that third year, you have to leave the country for at least 24 hours, and then you come back. You can come back after the 24 hours and start to rinse and repeat, start the whole cycle all over again, provided you didn't do nothing crazy because they're going to check you if you're on the blacklist, and they'll block you from coming in. Okay, So don't use that term three-year visa. I didn't tell you that. I didn't say that. Now you put that in your own words. <laughs> okay, buddy. Let go. <laughs> three-year visa. Ah, who? He said, the other day, my dog means the world to me. Even if she would walk up to me and bite me for no reason. <laughs> Let me tell you something, man. Let me, y'all listen to me good. If you got a dog that bites you for no reason, you better get rid of it. <laughs> Play that joke. I, my mama told me long time. She said, "She said, son." I said, "Yeah, ma'am." She said, "Never keep a dog that bites your hand when you feed. Get rid of them. <laughs> they ain't no good. <laughs> Don't let no dog bite you like that. You better train your dog. What's wrong with you? Gonna bite me for no. I, <laughs> I put up all the street. No, I'm just playing, y'all. Just playing. Let's go around, Jane Bobby. Who we got? Ah." Uh, Remember here, that's a, that's, a, that's a love bite, bro. Oh, talking about a love. Okay, you're talking about a love bite. I thought you mean just oh, bite you for no reason. Now, just like a little chip, you know, that, that's, that it's, if they're not getting any blood, then that's not really not a bite. That's just a, a little trip, chirp. You know, chirp. How you doing? Play bite. That's all I do. Okay, look, we got uh, Smooth. He said, Yes, we did. But she beat me on the, li on the lips. <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't pay for this type of stuff, y'all. I, I couldn't pay nobody to write this stuff. This is what he said. <laughs> oh, Lord, I'm about to blow my head off. <laughs> I'm busting, I'm busting a laugh out of my head. <laughs> now, but uh, I'm going to read again. <laughs> I said, yes, Miss Days, but she bit me on the lips. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. I gotta maintain, stay that by me. Okay. <sighs> okay. Uh, he said, "Yes, Mister Mister Hayes, but she bit me on the lip." <laughs> sorry. Okay. Uh, I got. I got. I'm good. <sighs> yes, Mister Hayes. She bit me on the lips when I was asleep last night. Okay. So your lips is busted up right about now, right, man? <laughs> <laughs> if she bit you on the lip, that means she pierced your skin. Did she pierce the skin? You had some blood on your lip. <laughs> Ooh, she wanted you to wake up. That's all that was. Let's go right train. We got Michael Coffee. Lee some coffee. What's up, Michael? How you doing, my brother? So good to see. He said, uh, Bobby, hello. Okay, all right. Yeah. Right train, Bobby Lee's one nation. That's it. All right, guys, it be real. Okay, well, we got some more. I go, God, is it Bobby? All right, God bless you with all of the train riders. Keep the faith, stay positive, and you like, that's right. Thank you so much. Nurse Mike is coming to us all the way from Sunnyside, Cali, California. He's a nurse, been in a hospice care center for what, 15, almost 15, 20 years, right? Something like that. And he assists people that are terminally ill. So 
always important to have these type of nurses in your in our nursing system because when your loved one is on their way while out you want to make sure that they have the best of care all right let's go smooth he said Mr. Bobby, you're right about people standing in your way about coming there. My relatives did in my way. Yeah, you know, they got a lot of haters out there. And the, this sad part about y'all, some people in your family are the worst haters ever. Real blood. I said some, not all. But there are some people in your family don't never want to see you do nothing but die, go down. And when you find them kind of people in your family, leave them alone. Don't cuss them out. Don't slap them. Don't beat them. Just leave them alone. Yeah. Speak to them. Hey, how you doing, Uncle Joe? Uncle Joe, how you doing? Good to see you. Bye. That's how you do. Keep it moving. Let's go. Ryan Train by Who we got? Move. He said, as far as the Airbnb goes, in my haze, I rushed to do things and did not read the whole thing on Airbnb when I went back. Okay. Okay. So you he signed up for Airbnb that said he had to share with somebody. <laughs> You better get out of that contract if you did, man. I don't want to share in the wild. That defeats the whole purpose of an Airbnb. Why would I want to share with somebody? No, oh, nah. Play that game with me. Uh, Michael Coffee. What's up? Need some coffee? He said, Bobby, the little guys, man, be careful about eating sweet street market food when traveling to the Philippines. Some foreigners, tourists have gotten sick. Yeah, happens a lot. I had a friend, one of our subscribers. Uh, I think you guys know him, Jeb Jam. He came out here, ooh, been about four years ago now. He came out here with his family and he, he ate some food. I think it was street food. And he was messed up for about a week. He would he had to run, baby. You hear me? He would run into the to the DCR. And uh, he had to actually go to the doctor. He had to go to the doctor and they had to give him some medication to stop it. I think he got some kind of food poison, you know, I don't know what it was, but it could be serious. I tell everybody, don't come in there, try not to eat the street food unless it's hot. Because if it's hot, the heat is going to kill the what? Germs and bacteria. Let's go around train five. Who we got? Who, Sam? He said, I was asking about the visa because I plan on moving there. So I want a visa that will give me time to look for kind of, yeah, uh, temporary visitors, visas, what you need. Okay, man. Let's go around train. Who we got? Michael Coffin. He said, Bobby the Hot. Some of these producers have been sitting out for too long in the street meat, at the street, in the heat, at the street market. So when you eat, you say, that's true. If it's sitting out too long, get bad on you. But the problem here, and I told you guys about this earlier, I think on some prior broadcast, the Philippines, and more and more, you'll see this more in Manila than anywhere else in Luzon, they have a thing that's called Pog Pog, okay? P-A-G, P-A-G, Pog Pog, okay? Look it up. Pog Pog is, a, is where the Filipinos go and get, um, let's say you, had, you eat at McDonald's and you need all your food, food right? So you threw away. They put in trash. Pug Pug people do, they go and pick out the trash, the food that you didn't, you, you didn't eat all the way. They tell them it's still good. And they'll pull out the trash and they, they get a pot. They do it at night, 12 o'clock at night. That's when they work. They go get all to the restaurant. They get to the dumps and pull that stuff out. They go take it home. They wash it. I don't know how you can wash dirty here, but then they wash it. They say they wash it and they sell it back. And a lot of the street vendors buy poke poke meat. Okay. So you got to be careful with that. Let's go around to everybody. Who we got? <clears throat> Knocking like he said, thanks, Whitey and Lizzie. I feel like asked my question as my Filipino do not like her sister expectations. But I agree with you as we are not walking a walking ATM now. Uh, if your wife don't like her sister, your her sister's expectation, that means she's trying to get some money out of you. Don't do it. Don't be that. You need to sit down and talk to your your, uh, your fiance because you have to develop a plan to deal with that. Every foreigner that's engaged or getting married or even boyfriend, girlfriend with a Filipina, you need a plan to deal with your family members. Family members have one agenda and you and your lady have another agenda. And those agendas will clash. They will clash sometimes because they want to monetize. Okay? And, and you're not, you not necessarily don't want to give them, but you don't want to be taken to the cleaners. So you have to work out a system how you deal with it. How you deal with that is individual to each couple. Okay. I, I don't play the I don't play that game, you know. I tell everybody, you know, want something from me? Talk to Lisa D and that right. Let's go. Who we got? Michael, he say, uh, Bobby, hello. 
some southeastern <coughs> countries, <coughs> excuse me, you know, draft. Some southeastern Asian countries still require you to have first COVID-19 vaccination plus your booster shot. Yeah, some countries do. Uh, uh, right now, the Philippines do still require you to have your, your vaccination. And then you also have to have your, uh, I think they dropped, dropped yeah, they, they dropped the, they dropped the 72, the, the, the test thing recently. So you just have to come here. If you require, if, they, if you need a test, they'll give it to you right there. But a lot of things are changing, right? And I haven't kept up with all of it. I might do a show on the changes uh, to get here just to keep you up. I don't have, I don't have a lot of people coming like they used to do. Every show I have people coming, people come. Now, I only got one guy saying, <laughs> And that's cool sound, so I don't know. We'll see. Ryan Chang, who we got? North Carolina said, what's up, Michael? And thanks for the information. That's true. Yeah. Ryan Chang, Bobby, who we got? I, uh, Michael Cobb, he's a Bobby High. Excuse me, gas. Excuse me, y'all. <laughs> uh, he said, some Southeast Asian countries, I have, if have not had your COVID-19 vaccine, you need a 72-hour negative COVID. Yeah. Some countries require that. Got to get that to get in. Uh, a lot of countries are dropping that right now, though, because they want the monte, they want the tourism sector to move back up, and they want they need the revenue. Okay, so a lot of countries are dropping the 72 hour requirement, which is this country has already dropped it. Okay, let's go around the chamber. Who we got? Who said he said a six year old boy will not go to jail? No, he shouldn't go to jail, but it said that the teacher would often single the boy out, and the boy kept telling her he's going to shoot her. <laughs> Oh man, are you, are you serious? The boy told her that. Mm, mm, mm. I don't know, man. Um, I, they, I I do know that uh, as from a student being a student in school or classes, that teachers have a liking for certain students, and this same teacher can have a disliking for other students. I've been on both ends. I've been on the liking side, and I've been on the disliking side. On the disliking side, your grades gonna suffer. I don't care how good you are; they're gonna always grade. Cause I know I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a good student. I know I'm a good. I've always been a good student. This lady, this lady, her name was Miss Adams. I was in the eighth grade. Miss Adams was a Caucasian teacher, and I was like the third black in class. And every class, you know, when you they ask questions in class, always raise my hand because I knew the answer. She didn't like me. I don't know why she didn't like me, but. When I grade when when paper I knew my age, my paper was A one. She would grade me down, give me an eighty, or it's always marking fine nitpicky stuff. So I do know some teachers don't like you, you know, pick on you and stuff like that. And then there's some that like you. Now I had teachers love me, I just, you know, but uh, I'm telling you, man, it is happens. But that don't mean you go get a Uzi, you go get a, a pistol and shoot nobody. So the young cat, young kid needs better parental training and guidance. And he can only get that from a professional because he didn't get the proper training from his parents. Let's go right train. We got smooth. He said, speaking of shooting, it was 19 shooting one day here in the Tampa area. Okay. Today, today, 19 shootings in one day in the Tampa area today. Oh my God. You in the war zone, buddy. You better get about it. <laughs> right train. Who we got? Michael. He said, Bobby Hill, please keep up with your white vaccine card. And report of the COVID-19 plus vaccine shots. This is so important. I have vaccine cards here. I've gotten all my uh, two initial shots, vaccinations, and I've got my two initial boosters. So I've got four shots so far, and I have each vaccine card. I'm waiting for the bivalent <clears throat> shot to get here. When that comes out here, I'll be trying to get myself down there to get that shot. I want to be protected because COVID is not going anywhere. It keeps mutating every time you turn around a new new variant. So I, I, the only way to do that, keep protected, keep your vaccination, your boosters up. Murphy, he, I figured out, I figured it was a teacher. I mean, for a six-year-old to do something like that, he had to be bullied. Yeah, probably. Um, but, you know, if that teacher did that to him, she needed to be disciplined. They need, they, they'll, they'll, all the truth will come out. All the truth, I guarantee you. All the, the details, whether it's good or bad or ugly, will come out. If she was bullying the boy, the other kids going to talk, and they'll find out. And she should be disciplined for where her action was as well. Now, at the same time, 
we need to be concerned about the teacher that she survives. No bullying in the world could cause somebody to shoot you like that. Okay, the little boy was wrong. The little boy is wrong, and he needs to be made aware of that in a very, very delicate and understanding way because his mind is not fully developed. He did it from a childish perspective, but he still did it. He could have cost the lady's life. We have to deal with the situation in a very, very delicate way. Let's go, Ryan Chang. Who we got? Michael is a Monroe, life in our calculator. Hello, God bless you. Keep faith. So welcome. Smooth. He said, love this country, but because of the relatives, bad things happening, shooting every day, I'm just ready to go. Okay. Um, guess what, my brother? Wherever you go in this world, going to be the same thing. Okay. Shootings every day. Bad things happening. Going to be the way. So let's be weird. Nothing can run, but you can't hide. If, if things going to happen there, it's going to happen wherever you go. Philippines, you think the Philippines is safe? Huh? <laughs> things happen every day here too, my boy. My guy. Now, as far as the school shootings, uh, I think I've, I've been here uh, eight years. I've only seen one sh school shooting here. So it's not happening as much. But everything you're running from will eventually, you'll find it where you're going. So it's about not running, but dealing with it situation okay De developing strategy to handle it and to handle it successfully wherever you are in this world okay let's go mark hill and how mark hill mark hill mark hill and how whoo what's up mark hill mark hill tv check out this program mark hill tv the podcast mark hill comes to us mark hill if you can be a friday man that's good if not hit me on next friday say what's up what's up we doing good, man. We doing good, man. You know, glad to have you on the train with us today. Good to see you. Mark Hill is our veteran specialist. He comes to us on Fridays. We just started back up. Uh, so I didn't get with him, but if you can get with us on this Friday, fine. We'll be looking for you. If you don't see, we know you couldn't do it. But get hit us on next Friday. Whenever you can. I'm putting I'm, I'm put a blanket statement. Whenever you can hit us on Friday, hit us on Friday, man. Okay, man. Good to see you in the house. Roger, he said, hopefully you are doing well. Thank you so much. Yeah, we're doing well, man. You know. Everything's good. Everything's blessed. Highly flavored and favored. Uh, this was a rocky. Uh, this was a rocky start. The rockiest start of the year I've ever had. You know, out here uh, we got these crazy people out here. I man, the crazy stuff. I ain't gonna tell y'all in detail, but uh, you have to be careful and you have to be cheerful at the same time. And more importantly, ladies and gentlemen, you have to be prayerful. Let's go, Ryan Chang, Bobby D. Who we got? Murphy, hey, twenty-eight thousand USD. What? You know, guys, you just said that a round trip ticket from USA to the Philippines, first class, is 28 now. That can't be. <laughs> I know you're right, but it's hard for me to fathom that. It's hard for me to fathom that someone would pay 28. I wouldn't do that. I'm sorry. I want to ride first class, but not at that rate. No, I'm not, I'm not playing that. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Are you serious, man? 28,000 round trip? No, so so apparently the airlines is is uh needing money bad you know they're gonna charge them kind of rate uh but i would really look before I, I made that kind of commitment i would i would just get you know i might just have to get a uh economy play I, i'm not paying no twenty eight thousand. i'm sorry i'm not gonna do it let's go right chain we got smooth <clears throat> he said twenty eight thousand. i would never pay that much i would use my hand for the rest of my life before i pay that i will use my hand okay all right, let's go, Rod Chang, Bobby. Who we got? Michael, he said, Bobby, hello. COVID-19 virus is still out there. Protect yourself, getting your vaccines and boosters. Yeah, got it, man. Got it, got it. Rod Chang, who we got? Murphy Hayes, what, Mark Hill? What, Mark Hill? Okay. Rod Chang, Bobby, Lee, see One Nation. Uh, Murphy Hayes, typo, what up, Mark? <laughs> <laughs> you see a different, you see, you see what difference just a few letters makes in a, stand, in a sentence? Could be evil, could be bad. What when he said what Mark here? Like, what you what you mean? What you want? What you gonna do with me? What you want? You want some of this? <laughs> but what up, Mark here? It's a different how you doing? Yeah, different, different connotation. Mark, I remember he said, Is your dog is your dog a Pomeranian smooth? I don't know. What kind of dog you got, Smooth? <clears throat> smooth said, <clears throat> hold on.
smooth him. No, my my lips are okay. I snore. I, I think he she thought I was snoring and growling at her. Okay. Okay. I snore. I snore too, but I want the I want the dog bite me. But I put him out the house. Now nah, I would put him in his dog cage. I would have a dog cage so he could stay in his bed at night. Put him right in the, in the dog cage. I don't want no dog. And cats are cats are good about this, guys. You have a cat. You go to sleep. They'll put their finger in your nose, scratch you up, and you wake up all your face all scratch. Oh God, I don't like that. I put them in a the cage right now. Let's go. Smooth. You have peace of mind. I had to get rid of my all my family. Okay. Okay. Y'all hear what he said? He needed peace of mind, and his family was stealing his peace. His family was stealing his joy. Can, can a family member steal your peace? Can a family member steal your joy? He just answered the question. Yeah. So I'm telling you, see, there's some family members. Family is supposed to be loving, caring, understanding, sharing, forgiving. Yeah. All families are not like that. He had a family that was the opposite of everything I just said. And he had a dysfunctional family. If you have a dysfunctional family, you will find your life a living hell. And nobody will want to be around you because you'll be crazy as H. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes in order for you to have a, a decency of living, a decency of thinking, a decency of freedom in your mind, you have to get rid of people. But at the same time, just because you don't want them in your life don't mean that you're evil to them. Or mistreat them or you'll be on the same level as they are okay let's go right train who we got smooth he said no my dog is a rat rat terrier rat terrier okay he's a terrier rat terrier okay right train who we got thumbs up to you murphy uh who okay i'm gonna run through this y'all but we run a little late here we're going we got a long time y'all been missing me a long time <laughs> uh smooth he said who who in here is a nurse it really is possible to give men meningitis for years without getting sick. Okay, I don't know. I, I, Nurse Mike, if you still let me answer that question. Murphy Hayes, uh, 14 one, what? oh, 14 one way. I still wouldn't do that. That's ridiculous. I mean, if, I, I would have to, if I wanted to run first class, I'll wait till the price would go down. I'll just take the counter. That's too, that's too much. And how the world. They think that by people going to do first class those kind of rates. You must be crazy. Now I'm not playing it. I'm sorry, man. I would. I keep looking. Cause I find me a better way. Who we got? Move. He said, Bobby, is it six? If a six foot tall Filipino transvestite was chasing me, <laughs> saying I love you, I ran knocking on your door, crying, would you let me? <laughs> what a question to ask me, man. Um, if a six foot tall Filipino transvestite was chasing me, okay, I got that part. Telling me I love you, right? Uh, and I ran to my, you ran to my door crying. Would I let you in? Uh, no. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I would let you in. I don't know. I don't know you. If I knew you, I might let you in. But if I didn't know you, no. <laughs> That's your problem, buddy. Deal with it. <laughs> I'll let you in. I got a six foot tall transvestite that man running after you. I'm going to let you in my house. I don't know you. No. Stay deal with your situation. I'll call 911 for you. <laughs> That's it. Let's go around and tell you what we got. And it's, yeah, maybe it was 15,000 USD from Detroit. I can't. Nah, I can't either, man. Michael Coffey. He's a smooth sounds. Hi. Meningitis is caused by meningococcal or streptococcal bacteria. You treat antibiotics to treat it. Okay. So his question was, is it true that you can have it and not know it? But he's he answered that you can treat that with uh, antibiotics to treat it. It's caused by a bacteria. Okay, so that that gets you. Man. Let's go, Michael Cobb. He's a smooth sound. Hello, symptoms are fever and signs of <clears throat> meningeal, meningeal and irritation. Smooth sound. Okay, Mr. Coffee. I was asking because my girl was always saying her baby was has that. Okay, her baby has meningitis. How would she know if she didn't take them to the doctor? And if her baby had meningitis, they would give her medication to treat it. Something ain't right, man. 
uh, you better check that out. Let's go. All right, guys. It's been real, it's been real, it's been real. We gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. Uh, thank you for joining me today. We appreciate your presence. Remember to hit the like button. If you haven't joined this channel yet, subscribe to the channel. Okay, man? We give, we bring it to you right, tight, long, and strong. We bring you scintillating conversation and topics that you will not forget that will help you in your life and keep you from strife. And that all, right? It's all about you, not about me. It's about bringing it to you. Each one teach one, each one reach one, and we bring all the glory to the Most High God. Okay, man? So this is Bobby DC. Take care. God bless. Oh, Lord. Man, hold on. I messed up there. Uh, okay, this is Bobby DC. Take care. God bless and peace.